Dr. Hey, Dempsey, thank you so much for taking the time to answer a couple of our questions today. Uh, I'd like to begin with your military service. Uh, do you mind telling us what you did in the military, how long you were in? Yeah, um, it was an interesting journey. So I spent 22 years in the United States Army as a infantry officer. Um, you know, did all the normal things you do or want to do in the Army. I started with the 82nd Airborne Division, served in the 75th Ranger Regiment, spent some time with the Marines, uh, was a uh, mechanized infantry company commander, and then uh, did a detour to teach, which brought me to Columbia, uh, and then went back out to the Army and went to uh, Afghanistan with the 10th Mountain Division, a couple years in the White House working veterans issues, another tour in Afghanistan with 101st Airborne Division, uh, and then some time in the Pentagon. So then I retired. That's quite the journey. So uh, you mentioned taking a couple of years off to teach, and that's how you ended up at Columbia. You mind telling yeah. us about your journey through into academia? Yeah, so you know, I had my own little journey uh, to academia. I was on active duty, mm -hmm. uh, but I'd been in the Army for eight years, and uh, you know, they uh, had the opportunity to either do regular Army stuff some more, or you know, possibly go back and teach a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I jumped at the opportunity. Uh, and it was interesting because I'll tell you, back then there were very few veterans on campus. Um, I was one of maybe a dozen people on the Columbia campus who were vets. Uh, a lot of us were still active. Um, and it was interesting in that, uh, you know, I'll tell you, and it's probably common for veterans to wonder, you know, about campuses and how welcoming they are. I'll tell you, even back then, uh, you know, the community was always more welcoming than people on the outside, you know, that looked on the outside. The, uh, you know, there was a long uh, struggle to get ROTC back on campus and, you know, for the military to get over, don't ask, don't tell, but uh, there were a lot of allies on campus uh, who wanted to know more about the military, who wanted to learn more, uh, and who wanted to welcome the military, right? So post 9-11, everybody understood that there was a role for the military. Um, and people of different political views said, well, no, we want them to be part of our community. And so, uh, you know, since then, Columbia has really grown and now it, you know, leads, uh, really leads the country in a lot of ways. And the number of vets it has on campus and the integration of the community uh, into the classroom. And it's a, uh, it's a remarkable thing. Uh, and it's wonderful in that you know, there's enough veterans here that you can find somebody who's, you know, it's not just the veteran tribe, you can find somebody who's been in the Army, the Marine Corps, the Navy, somebody who's been at the bases you've been at, uh, you know, somebody who's been in your shoes, they understand you. And so uh, it's a really great place to be, you know, if you're trying to work your way to higher ed. What advice would you have for any junior enlisted or any enlisted person? Or yeah, well, so I'd say a couple things to veterans transitioning. One. Um, don't be thrown off uh, that the journey is difficult. Uh, prepare for a difficult journey. And there's two things about that. One, I think a lot of times we mislead veterans and we say, you've done a lot of hard things. Uh, and veterans think, okay, well, I did a lot of hard stuff in the military, therefore everything else in life is going to be easy. And that's wrong. Right? Doing hard things in the military means you know how to do hard things. It doesn't mean the rest of your life is going to be easy. Uh, and so you've got to come with that attitude that you're going to school to learn and grow. Uh, and you should be challenged. And it is going to be hard. And you have to sit down and say, okay, how do I study again? How do I read a book? How do I take notes? Um, and you should expect to be a little intimidated by that. Right? You should expect it to be uncomfortable. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's insurmountable. You know, I think a lot of veterans will talk themselves out of getting back into academia because they think it's just too hard or that somehow they're not ready for it. Well, that's the whole point, right? Nobody's fully ready for it. So uh, understand you're going on something difficult, uh, but the point is to grow. The second element of that is what I tell vets is you got the GI Bill. <clears throat> I mean, the GI Bill is a tremendous gift uh, for the veteran community. Um, but it's not solely a gift, it's more of an investment. If Uncle Sam said, you're awesome, thanks for your service, uh, and it's okay to just retire and sit on your ass, uh, we just give you a big check. But we don't do that. Uncle Sam gives you this thing that says, this is tied to education because the government 
and American politicians, the American people, all understand and believe that you're not done and that you've got potential to keep doing things. And so the government's helping you to do something hard with a lot of financial assistance that most people would, you know, it, it, you should really recognize just what uh, asset you have in the GI Bill. Uh, and understand that with it comes a little bit of responsibility because we're asking you to continue your studies. We're asking you to be a better person. We're asking you to use the GI Bill to get educated uh, and figure out what your next chapter is going to be and then to do great with it. And that requires some growth and some learning. So, uh, you know, dive in. Don't be intimidated by it and recognize it's going to be a hard journey. But that's what we expect of you. What would you say is the most beneficial aspect of the veteran community here, specifically at Columbia University? So the great thing about the vet community at Columbia University is it's very active. Um, <clears throat> and it's very integrated into the rest of the campus. And so, you know, one thing that vets sh should consider on their journey is, uh, you know, you want to find folks who've been in your shoes. It's great. You can find allies to study with. Um, to kind of share your experience, but it should not be your goal to hang out with veterans uh, your entire time in school. Absolutely. Right? Your journey can begin with veterans and uh, you want to be more comfortable with that, but use your educational journey to find a new tribe uh, and to advance from something that you understand to a new thing that fires you up. So if you want to be a coder, then you don't want to just hang out with veterans, uh, you want to hang out with coders. Some of those might be veterans, and that's great if you can find veterans on your journey, but uh, you know, part of integration is uh, you, know, you should be looking to assimilate and really get in uh, with the full campus community beyond just your veteran community and really figuring out uh, you know, who you want to travel with on this next chapter. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. And one last question. I mean, you've had an incredible military career, an incredible journey through academia. Is there any parting advice that you would give to anyone that's in the military now, whether they be, or the vet, excuse me, the military community, be they veterans, active duty folks, anyone who's looking to enter academia? Yeah, ask questions, right? Because even the transition to academia is tough. Um, a lot of people don't understand the simple things, like the differences between degrees, like why why is an MA different uh, from a doctoral degree? And you know, why don't they necessarily fit together depending on what you're trying to do with your life? And uh, you know, there's a lot of varying degree programs, there's a lot of fields of study, um, and it's okay to not know which one's exactly right for you. Yep. Uh, so part of the homework is ask questions, check stuff out, read books and syllabuses and to figure out, I think the proper word is syllabi, uh, you know, read those things to figure out, okay, what does this all mean? And does it fire me up? One of the other pieces of advice I'd give folks is also, it's okay to take the journey and it's okay to do a little bit of self-exploration. Um, you know, don't pick a degree based solely on, well, I think this is gonna get me this exact job. Uh, for one, it almost never works out that way. Um, one of the things you need to use academia for is to learn to learn and to enjoy that process. And so everybody makes fun of underwater basket weaving, but like if you, if that's your jam and it really fires you up and you're willing to spend eight to 12 hours a day studying that and you become awesome at it, you might not be able to get a job in underwater basket weaving, but what you're gonna learn from practicing that skill will do great no matter what you do. Whereas if you pick a, a degree or a program that you're really not jazzed about, you're not going to do well. You're not going to discover that joy of learning. You're not going to stretch yourself. So it's okay to do something that just really fires you. It's better to do something that really fires you up versus something you think is going to get you a job. Because the point of education is to broaden, expand, and to really uh, push yourself. And you do that by finding something that, that really fires you up. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been incredibly informative. Glad to be here. Thanks for you guys.